War for Dragonstone is underway, which is great because it means we can flip to Valyrian and it's also a classic site of House Targaryen as well. So I feel like there's a lot of things, there's a lot of good reasons to talk about Dragonstone and it's an absolute powerhouse of a province. Welcome back to the adventures of Emperor, King, Duke, whatever his name is, King Aegon of Pentos of House Stark Targaryen, Rider of Drogon, Wise, Military Commander Supreme. Holy shit, I didn't realize he got... Oh, Dragon Rider gives another plus four. This guy is nuts. One of the best commanders maybe alive today. Not such a good swordsman. His own personal combat is a little low. Um, with only 90 there. But he's not bad, besides. I mean, I mean, all things considered, he's a very, very good character. So I'm overlooking it a little bit. There was a comment I saw last episode, first and foremost, that said, uh, before we really dive into things... Why don't we take a look at where all the Valyrian blades went up? Because the world is in so much turmoil. You know, Westeros has been conquered by the White Walkers and now overthrown. The White Walkers have gone and now a load of random, like, warlords have taken control of all the different provinces of Westeros. Now we've got Aztecs and all that shit. Um, why don't we check if the uh, Valyrian blades, or check, check whereabouts they are. So, wow, this is weird. Um, let's take a look here. Dalton Farwind wields Red Rain. Melanie Stark wields Heartsbane. Okay, weird. So these are all obviously from the show here. I won't go through all of them, but I'll just sort of point out some good ones. Septum Jamie Lannister wields Widow's Wail. What? Is that Septum Jamie Lannister? No way is that. That can't be original Jamie Lannister. He'd be like 100 years old. Septum Jamie Lannister wields Widow's Wail. That's a hard thing to say 10 times. Um, and then Lord Zara wields Crab's Pincers, which is another one of the Westerosi. That's an axe. Um, Lady Courtney Royce of the Gates of the Moon wields Lady Forlorn. That's what works as well. Wow, this is very odd. Armor. Dalton Fairwind has Valyrian Steel Armor. An Ironborn man who's fled to the Summer Isles, converted to their religion, is sort of living amongst them now. Oh my god, he's got Red Rain and he's got Valyrian Steel Armor. My god, I would love that. That would be incredible. Um, Red Rain is also the, the, the Valyrian Steel sort of House Rain, the, the house wiped out by, uh, by, by the Lannisters there, hence the whole Reigns of Castamere song. Um, Valyrian Steel Armor is incredible, look at that. Original owner, Euron Crow's Ice, this was Euron Greyjoy's armor, which has since been passed down through most of the Iron Islands there, ending up in, the, in, in, uh, in the Summer Islands of all places, that's very cool. Um, can we invite this guy to court? No. What if we send him a gift and just invite him over, because he's got no living family members. Oh, he's got a sister. Um... Via the laws of succession, I believe she would then inherit that, and she has children, so I believe they'd inherit that afterwards. But if we can maybe put him in prison, maybe antagonize him, maybe find a way to to invite him to our court and then get this armor from him, because there is so little Valyrian steel armor kicking around in the world, that'd be great. Valyrian steel armor wielding, cool little crown, cool little sword armor, everything. We'd be fully set out at that stage, and then loads of people have Valyrian steel daggers. I won't even begin to mention that. And there are the rules, so... The vassal comes last. I'm oh, sorry, the liege comes last. So, the current heir, regardless of relations, spouse, so any family member will inherit that sword. It's only when your liege is your heir will it fall back to you. Actually, that's not even true, because there are some, some situations where uh, maybe disinherited characters can still also inherit Valerian Steel. I don't know, but they, it's, it's quite complicated. But when we invite to court, we'll see if we can antagonize, maybe revoke it that way. I don't mind seizing an artifact if it's going <gasps> to... He surrendered. Your grace, I see not the point in conflict with you and your dragons. I hereby surrender and sweat my fealty. Of course he'd surrender. He's got 22 men. It's him and a group of merry men who have taken over the castle on Dragonstone. Of course he wasn't going to let us, you know, just, just move in and torch everything. He's invited, taking our gift to... Oh my god, if we can get, like, Dragonstone and also Valyrian Steel Armor in one episode. That is, that is a 10 out of 10 right there. Right, invite him to the court. Let's bring him over. Welcome. Then what do we do? Um... Right, so we can become a tyrant, but is it worth it for the armor? That's what we've got to consider right now. I'm going to start antagonizing him. The issue is this is going to be fairly difficult because we've got to antagonize him to the extent that he wants to plot against us or so that we can throw him in prison. But we've also not got to antagonize him so much that he leaves our court and just goes back home. So this is going to be a bit of a balancing act. We have Dragonstone now, and I believe we don't have a claim on Dragonstone, though, do we? So we can't actually revoke it. Um, is he a separate religion? He's not. Oh, God. Uh, can we convert? We can't even convert religion in this one. Do you not click on the, you click on the, like, the flag, or, no, I don't think we can convert. Um, it's one of these, isn't it? No, I don't believe we can. Maybe it has to be our, within our domain. Maybe that, I mean, that would make a lot more sense, huh? So we've got to find a way to revoke Dragonstone, which unfortunately means we've got to send, I was kind of hoping he would just let us go to war with him. Let's point ourselves a new, so our wife is actually the better diplomat, or the best diplomat we've got there. Let's get her fabricating claims. In about six years' time, on average, in six years' time, we'll have 
that claim on Dragonstone, at which point we want to revoke it. We can also make the Lordship of Dragonstone. We have a du jour claim on that. That would be quite nice to add to our collection. I'm wondering if we abandon Pentos. Maybe give it to the Starks or something, and then we move back to the Westeros. Or give it to, I don't know, anybody who, who we deem. I mean, Seaworth is set up there. Seaworth don't have any traditional claims before Davos anyway, so it'd be kind of fun to see the kings of King Seaworth of Pentos. That could be a cool thing. Abandon that and go for the Iron Throne instead. Why would we want both, realistically? And it also doesn't really fit the fit the show, nor does it fit the mechanics of the game. If you've got too much land, you have to give some out anyway. You can't hold too many Kindle level titles, that type of thing. Okay. But observing the poor performance of the Hand of the King, Sir Gerion. Uh, half the council want him sacked. Half of the council... Hmm. I mean, let's be real here. In terms of mathematically, that is a plus 10 with certain people, but a minus 15 with others. This one is a minus 10 with people, but a plus 5 with others. I'm going to go for this one. It seems a little safer, plus our council already pretty good anyway. What else can we do then? Go on a foreign tour. Absolutely, we need to do that. Last time we did it wasn't very good. Why don't we tour the feudal la lands of Westeros? That seems like the ultimate time to be doing this, now that it actually is the feudal lands of Westeros. Oh god, the Sunset Empire are so quick. After we get back from the foreign tour, I think we just need to start conquesting and maybe try and get the crown lands. That would be a great place to start and then move out from there. I think we've got to do it. And then give away Pentos and just set up a base power in King's Landing. I think we've got to do it. All right, let's tour the feudal lands of Westeros and let's do everything they have to offer. It's going to cost 100 gold, but we're going to get hopefully some good stuff. Shall I take my flagship, King Malus, on the tour named after our father? Of course we will. I've captained her myself. Let's see what the world has to offer. Blessings upon you and your house. I've been appointed as your regent. Thank you, my friend. We've, we're all over our domain size, but I'm just going to keep it anyway. My wife is pregnant, but I'm away. I assume he's paranoid. Yeah, he's paranoid, so we don't have to worry about that one too much, even though he is away. Um, I trust her word. I genuinely do. I think I think she's fine with it. We don't actually have a kid yet either, so that's pretty great. Okay. Pirates is the shout you hear from the deck. This is why we. I wanted to build the warship before we went on any you know, wars for the martial bonus, but also for, for adventures, things like this. Because we have this powerful ship, the chance of us dying or anything going terribly wrong are reduced. So it's 3% chance that we die. And then if we die, 50% chance of Drogon dying as well. We're fine. You managed to repel the attacking pirates with great ease. They did not expect you to be well prepared and they must thought you to be some petty trade ship. 50 pre prestige. Oh, the hiccups are back already. Oh, that's not fun. During your journey across the seas, your ship was hit by a terrible storm. The ship is rocking violently back and forth. Oh, Lord, no. Oh, 11% chance. My God. You and your men have managed to get the ship under control. These things are horrible. It's basically just like, go on a foreign tour. By the way, there's a, a, a fifth chance of you dying, if you had them all together, I guess. Um, if you've been my interest as well, yeah, sure. Honestly, I'm, I'm happy to spend the 13 gold in the hopes that she becomes... Honestly, she's already very, very good anyway. So we might not have needed to do that. Uh, Master Harwood of Rainwood. Thank you for letting me know. I don't really care. Hey, plus one. That's not too bad. All right. Like I said, I actually do want to abandon Pentos and move back to Westeros as a full-time thing. Just because I feel it's a lot more convenient than bringing all our troops over. We'll take back all of the Crown Lands first. So I'm not just going to move back. Oh, we can make Harrenhal our capital. Oh, but it's cursed, isn't it? So Harrenhal, unless you're a member of House uh, House Hall, means that you are, you will have suffer a curse. You get uh, lots of misfortunes, events that can end in death. Your children are born mutated because it's a cursed province. So I think we'll ignore that one. I may be able to negotiate some good trade deals. He's got 11 stewardship, so fingers crossed. Hey, there we go. 50 gold, 25 prestige. We're at King's Landing. The smell of salt water fills your nose with the water of the sea spill around the deck of your ship, King Malus, as you finally pull into the harbor. We visit some people. We're impressed by the scoping capital city of House Targaryen. We must leave quickly before anyone sees us. Almost to Storm's End. And he is the current Lord of King's Landing there, or the self-proclaimed Lord of King's Landing. No one else recognizes him. Almost to Storm's End, the seat of House Baratheon. It's good tradition to have some gossips around a pregnant woman. Of course, why not? That's fine. That seems that seems reasonable and just. We're going to see Lord Master Gallard. Goodbye, Lord... Lord. Okay, showing the old picture of the old lord, but I guess that's because we're living in his court. Again, another just random small lord there. Gruff Diplomat. Wait, what is that? Timekeeper. Skilled in the measurement of days and seasons. I guess he was some sort of um, mem mem member of the Citadel. I have no idea. Um, there's a lady here. A, a Stormlander lady who wishes to uh, see us in our quarters. I'm going to say no, absolutely not. Storm's end. As you ride in, the cool breeze rolls over the green ridges down the farms. There we go. You've arrived in time for the feast. What luck. How marvelous. We're only here for the events, you know. Uh, maybe armor, artifact crafting, anything like that. Along with uh, along with getting any events that give us bonuses to diplomacy or stewardship, as we saw last time as well. Though it didn't actually give us the diplomacy to st or, or stewardship buffs, but it can. That's the point. The dragon dragon is a ravenous beast. Uh, it's just a dragon. 1.5% revolt risk. I don't mind about that too much. If it gets too bad, we can always just crush the revolts. Alright. 
50% chance of our dragon also being killed by rabble. Doesn't really make much sense. Anyway, in a pub in Sunspear, in Lord Ronan's pub. Where is this? This is actually the capital of Sunspear there. Um, some random japes have tried to start a fight with us because we look funny. He does look pretty funny. I mean, they're not wrong at all, are they? I shall poison their drinks. That'll teach them to be racist <laughs> by killing them all dead in their home. The salt port... The hot dawn of sun beats down upon you as you make your way around the ancient capital of Dawn. Your flagship Kim Malis poured into the harbour of the Shadow City in an hour or so earlier and you made your way past the threefold gates. How marvellous. Our son, Tagon Stark Targaryen. He's born a... S excuse me? Twins? But not... Wait, oh yeah, no, actual twins. One is born Valyrian. They must be. Wait, but one's a Stark. I mean, our character has... Norvoshi blood and Carthian blood, and, and it looks Carthian. His mother has Essosi Valyrian. Yet one kid was born with the traditional Northman culture. We do have that bloodline. So, oh, you know what? We have the Stark bloodline. So, yeah, now that is uh, bloodline has strong seed. So, uh, that's more likely to be, um, because that's fairly strong seed, we're more likely to be born looking like a Stark than they are with Valyrian. Uh, that makes sense then. Tagon. Um, let's go for. What was the name of Aegon's son? Um. Shit, I can't remember now. He had two sons, one of which was a big old tough boy, and one of which was like a more of a diplomat. I actually can't remember that either. I'm going to call you Aenar, because that's a classic Targaryen name. Mayra, Mayra is fine. She's appealing, uh, which is just like diplomacy plus one. Basically like a, a sort of weaker version of fair or attractive. Um, we'll go for thrift. Let's go for thrift. Everybody gets thrift, because thrift is by far the best one. And we had a son. Nice. Ambition fulfilled. Right, what else have we got then? Um, have five children. Fall in love. Become exalted among men. Let's have five children. That seems like a great start, seeing as how starts are going. It's getting a little thin on the ground. Oh, God. Oh, God. What is this family tree? I'd wish I'd never checked. Let's not worry about that. It's a bit of a mess. Onwards to High Garden. We're off to see the Reach. See the house of... Uh, well, the, the seat of House Tyrabbit, of course, before that house. Uh, Greenhand, I think it was. My courtier... Oh, House Gardener. My courtier. Melonia Valancis has, has expressed a desire to get married. Uh, she, she was my mother? What? My father's wife. Oh, right, my father's second wife. I see. Um, marries you, please. I don't give a shit about you. You're nobody, realistically. Lord Master Mervyn, hello. We walk through a seats, we come across a peasant. I'm not sending them any gold. We need this gold to, uh, you know, start building up our new kingdom. What an interesting place. Let's move on. I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to read all of these. You can pause me if you want to read them. It's just a lot of backstory about where these provinces are. Council still, of course, have full control over... Oh, man, they fired Brandon Stark from our council. That sucks. Um, sure, any old master at arms then. Septum Othel, we're going to... Castle Rock is under the control of a Septum. Really? The Faith have control of that one. Interesting. Uh, so Tyrion, a lowborns man called Tyrion, a Westerman, wants to join us. Now nah, we've got enough already. Nothing to worry about. Castle Rock, there we go. A house... Uh, it wasn't House Lannister originally. Who was it? Was it House Casterly? Was that what they were called? It was Land the Deceiver took it from somebody I don't remember. Uh, who was it originally then? Um, oh, it was House Casterly. Well, there we go. They are now extinct. Awesome. Uh, I care not for these Westerman people. What a thing to say. Almost to Pike. So now we're going up to where the Ironborn are from here. Um, oh, you nothing. I don't care about you and I don't know who you are. Lord Earl Farwater. Welcome. Pike, how marvellous. I love that we don't care much for... Uh, Castle Rock, supposedly one of the largest like fortifications. It's basically a hollowed out mountain in the books. We don't really give a crap about, uh, or, or we give more of a crap about Pike. Almost to River Run, so we're going back over in this direction to River Run, which is around here. There it is, River Run. Sweet. Those troublesome peasants, high taxes. Oh, we need to be careful of that. I imagine our revolt was going to get fairly high now because of. Oh yeah, you know what? We're actually fine. Nothing to worry about. In between, you know, Drogon eating all their crops and their children and whatever, and in between the high taxes, I figured we might be in a little bit of trouble there. Poison some more drinks. Going around, kill him from province to province. There it is, River Run. You've seen that in the show probably a million times, I'm sure. Almost to the Eyrie. That's up there, the capital of the Vale, House Arryn. Lord Hugh Gladmore now. Hello, Hugh Gladmore. Just a random, just a random dude who's getting taken power. None of them are highborn. I'm really not surprised. I imagine there's probably a mechanic that prevents that. Or more specifically, I guess all those houses have gone extinct at this stage. Right, let's try a hand of foreign diplomacy. There we go. Game one diplomacy. That's what I'm really on these tools for. 15 prestige, 25... Oh, good, Gregarious. That's unlucky. That would have been great, though. And that's rounded us off. Our, our worst stat is now a very average one rather than just being crap. Onwards to Winterfell, which is going to be the most significant, I would say, of all of them. As this guy obviously descends from uh, House Stark there. Um, Salo offers a teacher a game called Kaiva. So this is basically like uh, a saucy chess. 
Let's go to the inn and study this game in secret. 25 prestige. I thought that might give us Game Master or something, so that would have been fairly useful. We are at Winterfell, of course, the capital of the north, right there specifically. How marvelous. You depart your... Uh, nothing. I don't, I don't know if... I thought maybe having Stark Bloodline might have given us some unique outcome from that, but I guess not. Courtier decides to get married. Married, please. I don't really care. So the other thing is, obviously, we join the uh, the Alchemist. Should already be focused on doing a little bit of that as well. Like, can we gather ingredients while we're away? No, you have to not be busy. Okay, fair enough. And apparently, we've recently ventured to... What blood feuds have we got kicking around? House Obazos still is in a blood feud with us. They've only got nine living members, and it, there's nobody really of note there. So I don't care about them too much. Your Red Priest, High Priest Yolo of Pentos reports that Maester Rafalo of Pentos has been humbled. Excellent. Good. We're improving relations with our vassals because of our charitable priest there. Finally, thank God, it's time for us to go home. And now we can actually carry on with the campaign. Was that worth it? We got one diplomacy. Someone sacked that dude. Um... I believe that one of your vassals can be discouraged from associating with conspiratorial factions. Ah, visit him with our dragon. You fly to Dragonstone in order to intimidate him. Classic. I do like that one. Riding astride Drogon, you fly to pay more Lord Master Adam an unannounced visit. On your arrival, you land on the highest tower of Dalaran, your dragon letting out a loud roar. Despite your obvious meaning, he's hosted you grudgingly, making it clear without saying you have no intention of ceasing hostile scheming. Next time we visit, it may be with Dragonflame. Oh, shit. Um... My brother got married to someone without our permission. She's fine. Jogos Nahai doesn't look like it, but she is appealing. Sure, whatever. Except the marriage. I don't care about it too much. He's not. Honestly, it suits his position. He's not in line to inherit any titles, the, the, the little smurf boy. So, I don't really care too much about him and his purple-eyed wife. We're home. Welcome back to Pentos. By which I mean, time to carry on with the conquest. Bravos. No way have they started grabbing up land. This is a betrayal. We're going to have to go to war with Bravos. Do we want to just grab King's Landing first, perhaps? Let's grab King's Landing first. I imagine they're most likely going to... If we turn up and we say, hey, bend the knee or we're going to burn everything you know and love. I imagine they'll probably just surrender, right? Surely they're not going to They're not going to accept that, you know... Not, surely they're not going to try and fight us. Let's give it a go. Bend the knee. Be bend the knee. Oh my god, no. This is the opposite of what I wanted to happen. Um, his vassals have tried to back him. I guess this is sort of a let's nip it in the bud before it gets out of hand style response. So they want to try and stop us before we get too powerful in Westeros. Okay, so now we've got to deal with Bravos to take the rest of Dragonstone. And now we've got an actual war in King's Landing. This is good because if we kill him, we gain his titles. Which would be pretty fantastic. Rather, So that way we wouldn't have to you know, fabricate claims. We would just get King's Landing. What is this? I was going to say we get to field test our dragons. They've already turned up. How many? Oh, come on. Let me, tell me they've got like four dudes. They've got 200 men. This is so good. Uh, kill them dead? Good work. 3% war score already for killing 300 dudes. Did that even count as a major battle? It did. We lost nine men and it counted as a major battle. Are you kidding me? That's so dumb. All right. Let's um let's let's show King's Landing who's really boss here. Now, again, I'd like to kill him. Um, There's a way to do this. If we sway him... There is a possibility he can agree to meet us for a truce. When he comes to meet us for a truce, we can try and kidnap him. If we kidnap him, we just execute him and then we get all his titles. Because that's how dragon conquests work. If they die during the combat, you gain their stuff. It's just very straightforward. Um, right, have we got boats? We do have boats. Okay, I, I thought those, those were troops, but we've actually got enough. My wife tells me she's pregnant, but that can't be right, can it? I mean, it is. It, it's always going to be right. I trust her word. Don't worry about it. They're sending in another three men. My god, is this what Westeros has to offer? We need to we need some serious uh serious rearrangement of politics over there. Uh, he needs electron charity, whatever, right? There we go. Baylor is now a lovely boy. Speaking of a lovely boy, we need to educate our son before he turns out to be absolute shit tier. Um sign guardian, right? Let's go for where do we? Hello? Marshall. Why don't we just go for full Marshall playthrough? I rarely do Marshall, because it's so useless outside of wars, and if your stewardship's high enough, you can just buy a bunch of troops. Or if your diplomacy is high enough, you just convince all your vassals to fight for you. It's not normally the strategy I go for. But in this scenario, actually could be kind of fun, huh? Like a full-on big old conquest playthrough. It's not something I do very frequently. So fuck it, let's do that. All right, merchant troops. Can we get anyone else on these goddamn boats? We can. Look at that. Okay, so, wait, what? 140 boats. 141, 14,000 people. 142 boats. 140 galleys. I assume the boats from these are rounded down? 142 boats, 140 galleys. Are... 
it doesn't matter. It does not matter. This is overkill anyway, but it's going to give us a place on the mainland where we can, uh, we can, we can set off and destroy. Um, I can only be, a, it can be a lonely night during a long war campaign, as we all well know, sat here in our YouTube comment section. So who can blame a man for having someone to warm his bed at night, as we all know in this YouTube comment section? Although it turns out one of my liaisons has resulted in a child. She should be honoured. 25% chance of getting the trade lost. Well, I actually did want to get that, because obviously it would help out with the whole Gav 5 children ambition. We could deploy the dragon in the siege. I feel like it's completely unnecessary. Capture him. We're done. Good war. Didn't need to worry about it. What happens if we execute him then? Feed him to my dragon. Just behead him. Hey, there we go. I thought that was the case. So we actually... <laughs> I only hope he remembered me fondly in his last moments. So there we go. That's how that works. So now King's Landing is ours. Whilst in King's Landing, you visit the Dragon Pit, where the beasts of Ovalyria were bred and housed. The great pits of the high walls fill your mind with fantasies and ideas. What I would like to do then is... Oh, we're getting the cutting trait. That's pretty good. Is hire some mercenaries to grab a load of kingdoms for us. To bend... To, to, to help. We'll lead them. But just to get these bunch of people to bend the knee as fast as possible. Because obviously if we keep declaring regular walls, we have to raise our vassal, uh, raise our troops, put them onto boats, move them over, attack, put them down again, declare another war, raise more troops, bring them over. You can sort of see how that would get very monotonous if we kept doing that after a while. So what I'm going to do then is let's go over to the Merchionary tab. And let's go for... Um, it's kind of expensive, Chief, I'm going to be honest. Um, 1500 My good friend... Norbert Ellister, welcome. You are going to lead my armies. Uh, and we are hopefully with 1,500 men going to conquer most of the King's Land as quickly as possible. I want to form the Kingdom of the King's Land. Kingdom of the King's Land, yeah, no. I want to form the Kingdom of the King's Land so that we can uh, we can give up Pentos. I know a lot of people might disagree with that. And a lot of you are probably thinking, why, why give up Pentos? Don't need to manage it. We don't need it. And, and Daenerys gave up Slaver's Bay when she went for Westeros. We're going to give up Pentos. When we take this, I want I want this kingdom to do well for themselves, you know? I want House Seaworth to get their time. Our ancient allies, House Seaworth. Princess, oh god, please don't tell me they're about to go extinct. Um, okay, six living members. Paro Seaworth, there we go, you'll do. I'm going to mark you a special interest, because he's not terrible. Just, intricate web weaver. Okay, he's pretty terrible, but he could be worse, more to the point. And I think, oh, fuck. I think that could be, uh, that could be very valuable. I'm moving the capital. I'm moving the capital. I don't, I don't care. Because... Honestly, it makes no real difference anyway. It just determines where our mercenaries are going to be hired. And we don't need mercenaries in Pentos. We've got troops in Pentos. We can just hire mercenaries in King's Landing instead. Right. Put down the boats with the boat button this time. And let's rack up a whole bunch of wars. Alternatively, we could have declared a whole bunch of wars simultaneously. The issue is, all of their nearby friends, vassals, allies would have joined in the war as well. So I think this is a safer way to do it. So we are going to, first and foremost, Aegon. Uh, Chakal, I think is how you say that. And Brandon Stark. This is a cool little lineup. Dragon Conquest. Now they've got an option. Swear fealty. Boom. There we go. Because we're there, because we're right next to them, looking very threatening. And then let's just keep doing that. Swear fealty. Boom. Nobody wants to fight the Dragon Lord of King's Landing. This is exactly what I was hoping for. Right. Claire Ward. Dragon Conquest. Confirm. This guy does not seem to be swearing fealty. He is wise. I agree. He is very wise. A very wise man. All right. Now I don't want to declare too many at once because the AI might cotton on and be like, hang on, all of us are at war with this dude. Uh, and generally, the AI, when you're at war, will take advantage of you anyway. So as we saw before, when we had rebellions and Norvos moved in and grabbed a province, if we declare too many wars, they might be, get a bit brave. So let's, uh, so they get a week to, to, to surrender, basically. But look at this. Look at how easy this is. And the more that swear fealty, the more are going to agree to uh, become our vassals. Now, whether or not we keep them as vassals remains to be seen. Obviously, we'll just give ducal level titles to one in particular, and that will do for those guys. Generally, the, whoever likes us the most will get the ducal level title, but I want to form the King's Land as soon as possible. This is all crown lands, isn't it? That's a lot. But look at this. Look at how fast we're spreading through it now. Send them a message. Say, hey, you can join the other seven vassals and swear fealty, or we'll burn you at the stake, as we did with the leader of King's Land, the most powerful province in the area. This guy... The madness. He's actually not standing down. Look, at if maybe because he dislikes us a lot. That could be something to do with it, I guess. Um, zealous foreign religion? I wonder. Anyway. Adults was born to King Aegon of Pentos and Queen Penler of Pentos named Larissa. That's not a very Targaryen name. Dana. Dana sounds about right. 
So we do need to give away a little bit of land. I've just been doing some behind the scenes stuff there, like uh, minor titles, that type of crap. Oh, we can make the High Lordship already. So we're 8 out of 5, which is going to make people hate us. And if people hate us, they'll have slightly to bend the knee. So why don't we give away some garbage over in Pentos that we're not going to use anymore. So Nontalos, for example, don't really want that. So we'll give that to the Lord of Nontalos, which I, I think is a fair trade. There you go. He's probably going to like us quite significantly now. 70. It's keeping our vassals happy. And it's land that we don't particularly have any interest in. Um, so what do we have? The Sunrise Road I'm happy to give away to somebody. Uh, let's take a look here, see if we've got a search realm for my culture. So it's only going to be people related to us, because they're high Valyrian. Um, let's just look for people who like us. So if we got a filter set up for... No, we don't. Okay, so let's go gender men. Ruler, no. Ruler, no. Diplo range, yes, obviously. Join core, any, doesn't matter, because they're in our realm. Anyway, save that as filter two. Uh, let's just go through here and see who we want. Jerry on. Um, is there any nobles, uh, noble houses that I recognize, maybe? Uh, we've got Andals, obviously Stark took in his hour, so I don't really care too much about that one. Just lots of Pentoshi randomers, to be honest with you. Uh, oh, he's got kings under there. Langwood. Allard Langwood. Uh, I would grant you, no, because he's, whoever this is. Oh, my vassal. Okay, yeah, we don't want to do that, because that could cause some upset there. Now, Andal, he's also, um... Oh, actually, you might not have been related to him. That was just his liege. Oh, well, it doesn't matter too much. I'm just going to go by whoever's got high stewardship, to be honest with you. Because I like money. Hello. I like money. What have we got? Uh, Sunrise Road. That's my Mr. Crab's impression. Copyright, copyright. Please do not steal. It's a very good impression, as you can all tell. Um, Sunrise Road. This is for you, my friend. All yours. Now, another option as well to give away another one of our land is we can go to... I believe it's the Red Keep that we're going to give away here. We can go to our minor titles and set up a commander of the gold cloaks. So the commander of the gold cloaks is the head of the city watch of King's Landing. So this was Janos Slint before he was sent to the wall. Or Bronn, I believe, was made commander of the gold cloaks. These aren't the, the King's Guard. Those are the white cloaks. These are, the, the again, the city guard. Uh, Jarion, commander of King's Landing. Oh, so it's always the commander of King's Landing, is it? Oh, I thought that would actually give him one of these. Okay, um... So the Red Keep, we've got the Dragon Gate. The Dragon Gate isn't traditionally held by the ruler of King's Landing, so I'm going to give that away. And that sets that up. Oh my god, they spawn in High Valyrian. Interesting. Um, that sets him up as a military command. Military command in simple terms are... It, it is a vice royalty, basically. A, a, I mean, barren level vice royalty seems a lot lot, but when they die, it reverts back to the liege, which point we give it out again. Um, so it works out pretty well for us there. Nice, okay. Uh, so that sorted that out. Let's see if this guy... Is he actually going to surrender? Oh, they're unhappy because we've landed people that... Oh, God. Okay, a lot of people have agreed this time. So we've got Lord Lord of Butterwell and the Lord of Rosefoot. We need to be careful. Oh, God. Okay, they're not happy about this foreign invader. Quickly, what we need to do then, in the future... This was my own fault a little bit. What we need to do here is make sure we are but a province away. Fine, that's fine. Uh, make sure we're a province away and we need to be moving in. Maybe a day away from the province we're about to get to. Oh... News from all realm provinces of a trial by combat. Triarch Dagar Panamion demanded by trial by combat by his captor Triarch Dagar Panamion. Excellent. But he was slain at the hands of his... So he demanded a trial by combat with himself and then lost to a guy fighting on behalf of himself. There, there are some strange people, the Valantine. Okay, uh, deploy the dragon. I'm actually going to torch this one down even though I wouldn't normally do that. Just because we can immediately trick him in irons. Now we could kill this dude. And replace him with someone else. But instead, I'm going to offer peace. Force him to bend the knee. Sure, he doesn't mind too much. Okay, he does mind a lot. Probably should have killed him. Definitely should have killed him. All right. We've got food poisoning, but it's not a big deal. So what I was about to say is, before we declare another dragon conquest, in case they turn us down, just so that we don't get a sort of chain of everybody in uh, Westeros joining the war against us, is we definitely want to uh, have our army ready to go maybe a day away from the province. So we'll say, wait until they're a day away from Rayonet, which is the 28th, 10th moon. Alas, fever. There we go, 27th. And then we declare war. Dragon conquest of Rayonet. That way, if they say no, we're already in their capital sieging it down. They might it might, it might also encourage them to say yes as well, because we're in the capital sieging it down. Give you leave to go. Good luck. Who are you? Edrin Aaron. Are you not the last male of House Aaron? Three living members. Oh, God. No, I refuse. You have a purpose. I'm going to land you. And he, he agrees. I would love to put House Aaron back in charge of, uh, of the Vale. Obviously, House Stark gets to go back in the north. We'll keep the King's hands. Is House... So, so House Spevins, which is Edric Storm, which is Robert Baratheon's son, still exists. So they'll get the Crown Lands. I don't know if we've got anyone from... Uh, uh, House Lannister all left our court. I'm not sure if there is a, uh, any House of the Reach left. We're going to have to track down some bloodlines to re-land them in Westeros and rebuild this place from the, from the ground up. All right. Stokeworth, let's keep going here. Declare War. Dragon Conquest. I want to get the whole of the King's Land. So we can get rid of Pentos and live here as as leaders to kings. Okay, food poisoning. That sucks. 
Claim on the City of Dragonstone. Thank you. I appreciate that a lot. Revoke the title. City of Dragonstone. Maybe. Maybe, he says. Do it. I dare you. I dare you. Uh, as long as you know what you're doing. I actually feel better. Excellent. Nice. That's what I thought. Okay, now can we convert to Valyrian? No. Do I have to hold the temple personally? Am I going crazy? Um, hmm. It is a holy site. It is a holy site. Dragon's, Dragon Valyrian. They must have just taken it out. That sucks. Uh, how do we convert to Valyrian then? Because I'd really like to do that. Um, the only way to do it would be to grab a Valyrian province then and just convert to their religion. So go and grab Mantaris or Illyria or some different parts of uh, Balantis. Maybe the south part. Yeah, so these grey areas have Valyrian. Move over there. I mean, it sucks, but it might be the only way to do it. Why don't we try and grab like Illyria just temporarily for a religious conversion? Illyria generally tends to be quite strong as well. Why can't we see any of their stats? What? Oh, is it because we're on religion map mode? No? Oh! Technology doesn't exist. You fool. That threw me completely off them for a second. Yeah, they got 8,000 men, so they're not pushovers, but that would also give us a means to uh, to convert religion by moving our capital, I guess. We've taken Shadebrush, but Lord Master Bolan is not here. Fortunately, we are going to have to melt their sub-provinces as well, so Dracarys... 2% chance of him being maimed. Ooh, he was actually wounded, which I'm fairly surprised by. No one of value here. Oh, this sucks. So because we can't have a major battle... Oh, that might count as a major battle, I guess. Let's go for them. Come on, please count. That might count enough to actually let us finish this war. Nice. 100% it did. Thank God for that. Okay, off of peace and force demands. Thank you very much. All right. So now we've got a fair amount of the King's Lands already. This is nuts. We're actually blitzing through this. High Lodge for King's Landing. That is mine. Thank you. So do you want to give away some of these? Oh, man. We've got three Dutch level titles, though. Ah. Uh, one of which is the High Lodge of Pentos. Uh, here you go. No, wait. How Seaworth. I want you to take over Pentos. I think you deserve it. Paro Seaworth. You get Pentos. Oh, shit. No, we'd have to give him... What could we give him? We're giving the... Oh, we haven't got... We give him the Great Arm. And then we can give him the Dutch level title. That would work. Let's do it. Uh, House Seaworth, for, for your services, and because I like Davos, he's probably my favorite character in the show. Oh, you've got a brother. Is your brother better? In terms of stats, yes, but in terms of education and, and traits, probably not. You get the Lordship of the Great Arm. May it serve you well. Uh, people annoy that because the people are not happy. Uh, and then we'll also give him the, the High Lordship of Pentos, but we won't include lower tiles. So Pentos is mine. We will... I was going to say transfer him the Sorrow Sorrow, but he's got that anyway. Pentos will keep until we've got a bit more of uh, of the Crown Lands here. So we can make our Kingdom level title of the Crown Lands. Right, moving on. Dragon Conquest of Rosby. Onwards to the next one. Clamp him in irons. Again, do we want to just straight up execute him? I think we do. I think we want to execute those who do not want to join us. He's gone. Oh, that actually didn't finish the war. Oh, why? And sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. Hmm. Oh, you know what? The last guy was feudal. This is a uh, Republic. So the heir will just be... He will always have an heir. Okay. Uh, whoops. Oh my god. This is getting out of hand. Oh my god. Oh my god. Huh. So how many people are we at war with? Oh shit. Come on. Is that the entirety of Westeros we're at war with? They're not happy about us. That we've sort of proven that we are we are a conqueror. They they know what we've got planned. Um, is that the whole of Westeros? Oh, they joined the last guy who we just executed. Oh well, isn't that a shame? Kind of annoying because they might also agree to join this guy as well, which would suck. Right, let's get this done dealt with as soon as possible, then, because I can't risk that. Dracarys, bend the knee, bend bend the knee. Is that his troops? Major battle done. Please give me enough major battle to finish this war. Nice. Okay, we're good. Ooh, Rosby is mine. How can you kick me out of what is mine? Thank you very much. Okay, so... How many more provinces till we can create the Crown Lands? We need... Uh, not many more. 13, so we got 14 out of 37. So we need roughly 18 provinces. So that's not too bad. 18, 19... Well, it'd be 19 provinces because it's always rounded, uh, rounded up. So... What did I say? 18 provinces. We got 13. So it's only a few more wars and we're, we're, we're set. We, are, we have this in the bag. The Crown Lands are ours. Duskendale is a ruin. Oh. Okay. Well, that's new. I, I think the White Walkers did a bit more damage than it was able to be reclaimed. I wonder if that would have happened to the whole kingdom. If, if that had been left long enough. That guy surrendered because he's a sensible boy. Uh, move over to this one then. And let's declare war. Dragon Conquest of Rollingford. That guy surrendered because he's a sensible boy. Oh my god. You're just, you're just giving it to me on a silver platter now, huh? 
Thank you. I do love it when I'm when I get it given to on a silver platter. Nice, thank you. Let's move up to Birch Hall. Uh, talk to me about kindness. I agree. Everybody should be kind. Be kind, children, so that way we won't get a knife in the back. Okay. Oh, well, it still probably won't stop it, but it might discourage them a little bit. This guy's not surrendering. Oh, come on. Don't be a hero. Nobody nobody likes a hero. It's better to be alive than to be a hero. That's what I've always said. Do you guys remember when I've said that in every series so far? I've never said that before in my life. Antlers. He's in hiding already, so maybe he's scared. Surrender? He was scared. You big babby. And that is the Kingdom of the Crownlands. Make primary. This feels good. This feels like House Targaryen is, is back where it belongs to be stuck, Targaryen, obviously. If only the Lannisters could see us now. What an incredible sight. Now, the, the Aztecs have expanded very, very quickly. They are still at war as well. They don't have, although they've got an absurd amount of troops, they don't have the luxury of people being able to immediately surrender to them. That's only a dragon conquest thing, because I guess men can be killed, and a dragon is sort of semi-mythical, semi-legendary, so... Wow, they're doing very they're doing a pretty good job though. They've carved a significant amount out of the Westerlands and the Reach there, so we're doing well. We've definitely started superseding them, but again, that's all down to the dragon there. Pentos, it was nice knowing you. You've served us well. I grant Lord Power of Pentos, the Kingdom of Pentos, and its lower titles. May they serve you well. House Seaworth. Good luck. I don't want all of this shit. I really don't want any of this shit either. Um just make it independent. Got independence. A little bit of independence there. Don't want any of this. Thank you. Garbage. Seven stars. Good luck. Pentos. I, I love that. They're, that's where House Seaworth belongs. Davos would be so proud. From smugglers to kings. Only took them six generations. That's a pretty good turnaround though, huh? He is a local Pentoshi man as well, so we'll be able to hold the rounds together better than we ever could. And we're doing a, we're doing a Daenerys right there, like I said. Well, I wish. But we're doing a Daenerys right there in the sense that we're giving up our our provinces, our our traditional lands to pursue our our home. And speaking of which, we've actually got all of our claims now. So that's kind of nice. We, you, you get dynastic claims. We've got them all. So uh, that's very, very nice. We're going to leave that one there. I think this is the beginning of, of something great. Restructuring the entirety of Westeros, how we see fit. And then what I think I will do, I'll be honest with you. I think we'll keep this save game. And then if we ever come back to the Game of Thrones mod, we'll pick up from where we are now. And then play somewhere else with our new Iron Throne forged. I think that'd be kind of fun. But anyway, well, that's, that's for the long term. Thank you all for watching. For those of you interested, there is a new Patreon goal at the $600 a month mark, which, to be honest, we're only like $20 off right now, which I may end up regret doing. Uh, people from Discord have basically taught me into it. Check that out if you're interested. Um, I am very concerned, given that some of the things people have threatened to do with that. But anyway, I'll, I'll keep it somewhat on the download there. Thank you for watching. Let's give a shout out to the aforementioned patrons. A big shout out to Justin Wallace, Harik, Alpha Scuff, Asuna Kirito, Atmosis, Average Gamer 419, Banyol, Sidini, Conspired T, Crazy Pack, Croesus, Escape, Facundo Vasquez, Hey Dog, Jimbo, Josh Lindin, Tesla, Michael Mullen, Necrofilm, Palvis Presley, Sean Thornton, Smurt Worm, Tom Sarah 18, Vacuous Backers, Wolf Scent, and Zazzy 7011. Thank you all for your support, the insane tier lovers on Patreon. It is most appreciated. Thank you for making this channel possible in the first place. And of course, a big thank you as well goes to Gray, Nathaniel Lindberg, Luana Thomas, Asaro, Betamus Max, Chris, David Van Diepen, Don, Don Conning 2 and 7, Gabriel Van Ders, Gaz, Genji Zerka, Haji Damar, Hancock, Harry McGowan, Icy the Great, Jay Lara, James Barnes, Yoran DeVries, John Holiday, Jordan Campbell, Joseph Beard, Justin Plot, Nathan Flores, Matthew, Nick, Panther Pearl, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, Sir Thor the Swede, Shari, Wolfie, Zico, Adam Person, Sidini, Fraser Brennan, Noah Gallimore, and the Insane Pickle 2. Thank you all for your support.